seconds away on Studio 5. Mr. Spell, I'm Thurgood Marshall with the NAACP. The life of a legendary Supreme Court justice comes to the big screen. And... They just sent over Deja's file. And? Her mom's in big trouble. See why Sterling K. Brown's star rises higher with this performance in Marshall. Plus... I don't think so. We're on the set of The Wedding Ringer with Jennifer. Josh Gad adds laughter and bravery to his performance in this incredible film. Studio 5 starts now. And welcome to this special edition of Studio 5. Before we dive into all things Thurgood Marshall, let's begin the countdown of the top five headlines in uplifting entertainment news. At number five. A stage that felt like your purpose. It's only a tool that helps you walk out your purpose. Singer Selena Gomez was a guest at this year's Hillsong Conference. On your 23rd birthday, Jesus will become real to you. Taking the stage to read a letter addressed to herself and sharing her personal faith journey. Selena, you are enough. Not because you've tried hard, not because you have loved hard or put on your best face, not because you have been given a large platform, and not because others can tell you that you are enough. You are enough because you are a child of God. At number four. How far have you come? From Galilee. VidAngel releases the pilot episode of its new series, The Chosen. It tells the story of the first Christmas, and director Dallas Jenkins calls it the most important film he's ever made. Can I have my dinner now? Not with us. You sleep with the sheep. <laughs> that brings us to number three in the countdown, and we will get to that shortly. Right now, it's time to sit down with actor Chadwick Boseman. He's the star of the new film, Marshall. Boseman plays the role of Thurgood Marshall, before his historic days as the first African-American Supreme Court Justice. Chadwick Bozeman is this week's Studio 5 interview. Thank you, Jack. What are you thanking me for? Chadwick Bozeman played Jackie Robinson in 42. Well, the Stones, they ain't ever had a hit record yet. James Brown in Get On Up. Mr. Spell, I'm Thurgood Marshall with the NAACP. And now, the role of Thurgood Marshall, before his rise to become the first African-American justice on the United States Supreme Court. All of the other biopics that, that uh, came to me, you know, I turned them down. She says you raped her and tried to kill her. She lied. I'm telling you this up front. The NAACP were not like most lawyers. We only represent innocent people, people accused because of their race. That's our mission. You understand? One of the unique and, and, and beautiful things about this is he has got to defend someone accused of rape and attempted murder, but he can't speak in the courtroom. How do you do that? Well, that was the question. I mean, for me, reading that he's gagged in the courtroom, at first, it was like, well, there's no way I'm doing this because I don't get to talk in the courtroom. Yeah. I don't get, I don't get, the, <laughs> I don't get the big speeches. And um, at a certain point, as I, as I continued to read, I realized that it was, you know, having your arms, doing a boxing match with your arms tied behind your back and still winning. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can do that, you're the greatest fighter in the world. Um, so it became the whole, the really, the 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 conceit, the the. Uh, the obstacle actually to get over and so it became a conversation of how do we a um how do i set up the first part of the movie um you know or everything outside of the courtroom so well so that when we get in the courtroom and i can't speak that that's justified um the hero is established and then how do I continue to establish the hero not being able to talk? How are we shooting this? What are the nonverbals? What is the interplay? So a lot of that was was found when we actually got there. That was improvisational. Um, the, the subtext and nonverbals was all stuff that Josh and I found um, or that I found alone when the camera was just on me. And that's just a great acting exercise. You know, it was something that I knew would be difficult for any actor to to uh, to pull off. You do it well. I mean, because I know coming into it, I thought, well, 
Chadwick doesn't look like Thurgood Marshall, but you really become him right. uh, in my, my mind watching it. The timing of this film, set in 1941, we're in 2017, having a conversation about race yet again. How timely do you think this film is? Uh, it's so timely. Um, I mean, and we, we couldn't even plan it because we, we, we wanted it to come out uh, during Obama's White House. You know, wow. I think the producers wanted a White House screening of, mm -hmm. of this movie. Um, the movie wasn't done yet, and we end up now putting out the, putting the movie out, not knowing that we would be in this 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 time post Charlottesville, um, you know, dealing with uh, three uh, three attempts at changing healthcare and uh, dealing with the, the the you know the president saying that that uh, players can't protest, essentially protesting. Um, you know, unfair treatment of, of African Americans um, by police. You know, that's that's essentially what this this whole thing started. It's essentially asking Americans to live up to to uh, to uh, America to live up to its dream, mm -hmm. um, and that's patriotism. So we didn't know that patriotism would be under attack in this way, and that white supremacy that the Charlottesville would have happened, and white supremacy would, would have such a, a forefront. And that's you know where this movie is. This movie. Um, has a backdrop of white supremacy in Germany and has a, a, a fore um, front of white supremacy in the story. And so we didn't know that this movie would speak to this time period because we planned for it to come out much earlier than this. Marshall is in American theaters this week. We'll have a more extensive look at the film in just a moment. Still ahead on Studio 5. The court hides nothing from the people. Nothing. You've presented a defense that is based completely on lies and deceptions. Sterling K. Brown moves from prosecutor to defendant in this first film since snagging two Emmy Awards. And welcome back to Studio 5. We want to get back to the countdown of this week's best in uplifting entertainment news. At number three. Looking for the perfect gift for the believer on your list this holiday season? Oh, Comedian so John Christ that? does it again. Say hello to Christian Alexa. The With this holiday spoof. Alexa, play Kanye West. How about Matthew West? Alexa, text Vanessa. Can't wait to see you soon. Kissy face emoji. Is that really guarding her heart? It's the, the believer's alternative to the Amazon Echo. Always wanted to be a better Christian? Well, now you can with Christian Alexa. Ah, shh. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. And each Christian Alexa is uniquely programmed to help you with your individual struggles. Hey, you want something to drink? That better be a Coke bottle. Yeah, the At number two. An exclusive Studio 5 sneak peek at an uplifting family romance. I give it all for you if you let me. Forever My Girl is about taking second chances and finding your way back home. I'm sorry about your grandma, Josie. Hey, Liam. Hey, Dad. A rock star returns home to his small town and southern roots years after jilting his bride at the altar and choosing fame and fortune over love. So this is where you work. I own it. I actually did something with my life after you walked out. Hey, Mama. Hi, sweetie. Hey, I know you. You're that country star my mama listens to. Not really my cup of tea. No offense. None taken. This film hits theaters nationwide January 19th. Hey Liam, why'd you leave my mama? I was young, I got lost. But you found you'll be back now, right? And that leaves only one more story in the countdown. You'll want to be sure to stick around for that. Sterling K. Brown has added two Emmys to his shelf in the last year. Marshall marks his move from the small screen to the big screen. I'd say he is soon to be holding an Oscar as well. See why Sterling K. Brown is this week's Studio 5, one to watch. Nothing from the pizza. Nothing. You've presented a defense that is based completely on lies and deceptions. Sterling K. Brown's performance as Christopher Darden in The People vs. O.J. earned him an Emmy in 2016. They just sent over Deja's file. And? Her mom's in big trouble. 
He adds another trophy to the shelf in 2017 for his performance in the NBC hit series, This Is Us. People versus OJ, uh, This Is Us, you seem to be riding a beautiful wave right now. I am uh, Where does this film for you fit in that wonderful wave you're riding? So I need to know this, look at me now. Did you do what they said you did? I never touched that woman. Okay, Joseph. You got lawyers now. This is the, the, the first film that I've done um, since, since OJ and um, This Is Us. So it's sort of a new foray for me from the small screen to the big screen. And it's exciting. You know, like it's it's one thing to come into people's homes on a weekly basis, but it's another thing when people, you know, get a babysitter and uh, <laughs> go out for an evening and hopefully come enjoy a film in, in, in the cinema. Yeah. Were you familiar with this Thurgood Marshall story before coming to this role? Not at all. Mm. It was one that was completely foreign to me. And so I got a chance to get educated in just the research of this particular story and inspired by the example of this young, uh, just how young he was. I think he was 31, 30, 31, mm -hmm. something at the time. But he had the chutzpah to go across this country fighting racism with his incredible legal mind. Like, I'm 41 now. I'm like, Brown, you're slipping on your pimple, baby. It's time to get it together, you know? I tell you. Yeah. Some have compared this, even I think the screenwriter compared this to the O.J. Simpson case. Oh, really? Um, I'm curious if you see any similarity. You are, of course, um, the person being defended in this story. Right. And you, coming from the people versus O.J., do you see any similarities to the case? That's interesting. Uh, not so much. I mm. think O.J. Simpson was a very particular defendant in that he had celebrity mm -hmm. on his side. He was also two years after the Rodney King beatings. And so he was dealing with um, uh, a jury of his peers that were all too ready to see police misconduct as the status quo, mm -hmm. right? Whereas in a situation with Joseph Spell, he doesn't have any fame. Nobody knows who he is. He doesn't have any education or access to the greatest legal minds, but he was fortunate enough to have Thurgood Marshall come to his defense. Um, you know, O.J. Simpson had sort of a glowing image of like the epitome of the realization of the American dream. Yeah. Joseph Spell looked guilty, not only because of the color of his skin, but because he had gone through a dishonorable discharge and had a wife and ch children that he had abandoned, had another lover that he also, and now he had entered into this relationship committing a, adultery with this woman. So he's not a perfect defendant mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination. But what was appealing for me was that his imperfections do not equate to his guilt. And too often in this country, we can see someone and think that we know who they are and throw, you know, cast them aside as if like, I don't want to bother, but everybody's life matters. Like Joseph Spell, life matters. Mm. And you can't just throw this brother away because you don't like the way he looks. The new season of This Is Us is in full swing on NBC. You can catch Sterling Brown there and his amazing performance in Marshall hits theaters in America this week. And still to come. Hi there, it's Chadwick Boseman. Sterling K. Brown. And Josh Gad. No, don't, don't move a muscle. Your sneak peek of our new movie, Marshall, is coming now. I wish you'd have told me that before. You should have been on the same page. Josh Gad takes his turn in the Studio 5 hot seat. And welcome back to Studio 5. The wait is over. It's time now for the number one headline in this week's countdown of the best in uplifting entertainment news. At number one. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. 
Amazing Grace commands a standing ovation on NBC's The Voice when contestant and Christian youth leader Brooke Simpson delivers a hair-raising performance. Simpson's parents, who are both evangelists, beamed and blew kisses from the audience. I was blind, but now I see. That wraps the countdown and brings us to a much more extensive look at the film Marshall, starring Chadwick Boseman, Sterling K. Brown, and Josh Gad. In fact, we turn to him to guide us through this first look. NAACP. Very good. You're going to Connecticut. Joseph Spell, Negro servant, attacked socialite in her own bedroom. This case will show the world if a colored man can get a fair trial in the United States. There's only 13 million Negroes depending on you. Don't any of you have any confidence in me? I'd say you have enough confidence for us all. I need a partner who the jury can relate to. Sam Friedman. Good to meet you, Sam. Hey, give me a hand with these, would you? What have you got in here, cement? Guns. Books, Mr. Friedman. You just sweep through town, stirring up all kinds of ugliness. My life is on the line here. Hey, Attorney Friedman, hold on a minute. What do you want? You're one of us now, Sam. A real fighter. We see Sam Friedman take this case in this film because he's convinced by a high school friend. But for some reason, I think it's deeper than that. Why do you think he took the case? I think he took the case because he knows he has to. Mm -hmm. I think he took the case because despite the two little figures sitting on his shoulders, <laughs> the one who's saying don't do this, the one who's saying do this, he's always sided with the one who's saying do this. Mm -hmm. And he's needed that extra push into the abyss. It's scary. It, it's scary mm -hmm. um, going out and knowing that you're going to publicly have attention drawn to you in a way that will most certainly um, end with harassment, if not worse. That is a message that is still playing out in this day and age, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and while this movie touches upon many themes, I think for me one of the great themes is um, alliances, right? This, this story about two allies. One who is dealing with bigotry and hatred because of the tone of his skin color. And the other who's, who's dealing with bigotry and hatred based on the faith he chooses to practice. But as they both learn, bigotry doesn't choose favorites. It knows no bounds. Uh, and so they share this common goal of defending a man who without their help will most likely most certainly um, face a death penalty. Mm. What was it about the role that attracted you? We're used to going to the theater and you making us laugh. What was it about this dramatic role that appealed to you? It's just so rich. I mean, it's just so rich. The arc of the character is one that was so wonderfully um, deep and complex and thrilling as an actor to roll up your sleeves and jump into. You know, I trained as a dramatic actor uh, for four years in conservatory <laughs> and ended up doing comedies. And, and that was happenstance uh, and happenstantial. And for me, there is something so wonderful about going back and doing a story like this because it is unexpected for my audience. And I want to keep them on their toes. I think that's important. So whether it's this or, or my next film, Murder on the Orient Express, it's just about allowing myself to grow, mm -hmm. continue to grow, and also for audiences to evolve in the way that they see me. But this movie is in many ways a message of hope and inspiration. And that's what I want audiences to leave with it, mm -hmm. with because it's easy to feel hopeless right now. And you as an individual may feel like, what difference am I gonna make? You can make a world of difference if you're willing to have the bravery to go out and try to do so. This family, this <clears throat> story was held by the Friedman family pretty quietly. Have an opportunity to meet with any of them, speak to any of them? Uh, not only ha have I had an opportunity to meet and speak with, mm -hmm. um, Laura Friedman was my great lexicon during this process. She was my encyclopedia because 
unlike Thurgood Marshall, Sam Friedman's life is not well documented. Mm -hmm. And so she became my entry point into capturing the essence of that figure who happened to be her father. And that was a huge part of my process. Quick reminder for you, Marshall is in American theaters on October 13th. Now that brings us to the time to laugh, and our resident comedian is actually poking a bit of fun at Josh Gad and his impression. Here is Lionel Harris. You just saw Josh Gad in the last interview, and he's a very funny guy. What a lot of people don't know about Josh is he's also really good at impersonations. Check out this clip. We're on the set of The Wedding Ringer with Josh. I don't think so. We're on the set of The Wedding Ringer with Jennifer. <laughs> you know that clip was hilarious. Because <laughs> typically I don't like when white people do impersonations of blacks. Up next on Studio 5, film director Reginald Hudlin with a lesson we can all learn from the life of Thurgood Marshall. And we are just about out of time for this week's Studio 5 and your first look at the film Marshall. Let's look ahead now to see what we're working on for next week. I wanted to honor his memory with it, but I also wanted it to do some good. She's the face of the third hour of NBC's Today Show. At the same time, the fierce army of the Philistines. And the voice of a new biblical project to reach young people. Somebody get me someone who can actually sing and soothe my tormented soul. Studio 5 is in New York City for a candid conversation with Kathy Lee Gifford. And we're bringing you that story next week. But before we say goodbye this week, I'd like to give the final word to the film's director talking about Marshall. Here is Reginald Hudlin. I think he should be a hero to all of America. Mm -hmm. Here's a guy who took the promise of the American Constitution, all men are created equal, and made it real centuries after the fact. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, using the courts he said, you know what? This was not written for us, but we're gonna use it for us. Sometimes you have to look into the past to see a reflection of who you are now. And that's what I think we have. I think we go, why does this look like today? Why haven't we moved further as a culture? Now, some might say freedom isn't free. And yeah, we won that battle then, so we should take heart when we have to fight again. Mm -hmm. We have to renew our commitment to freedom, our commitment to justice. Those are wise words from the man behind Marshall and other films like Django Unchained, House Party, and Burning the Sands. That is also the final word for this edition of Studio 5. Until next time. Reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And then be sure to come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>